scripture of focus this morning, Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse 10. I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstance. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Him who gives me strength. This is the Word of the Lord. What a beautiful opportunity we have to be together. Amen. Amen. And you can tell people are starting to relax a little bit. Glad that you're here. Glad to see your face. Um, it's an awesome time that we get to come together and be in the presence of the Lord. I also want to say hi to everyone that's watching us live that's not quite uh, out of quarantine yet. We just want you to know we love you guys and we feel your presence here. Hope you feel ours at your home. Let's say hi to them in uh, Facebook there. Yeah, they can see you. I mean, like, we got cameras. They're watching all of you, so be careful. Be careful. It's like Big Brother stuff, man. It's great. This morning, I'm really excited because I believe that God wants to share with us today something that we can not only take with us, but if we practice this on a consistent basis, we will actually become extremely strong spiritually. And what I mean by strong spiritually doesn't mean that, ooh, you become so strong that whatever you believe in spirit, it'll happen. It's not that at all. But to be spiritually solid, knowing who you are in God. We are now experiencing a time, not only some of us internally in our own lives, but even in the lives of our society and within our nation, within our world, just a bunch of uncertainty, a lot of fear moving. And we find ourselves sometimes on what we call a spiritual roller coaster. There's those moments we feel great spiritually, but then something happens and it levels us spiritually. And we keep going up and down. And I don't know about you, but a lot of times I get tired of feeling great, feeling bad, feeling great, feeling bad. And I remember scripture when Jesus said that not to build your house on shifting sand. And maybe you've experienced that like I have spiritually. I want to be solid. I want to know something that no matter what happens, God is still God. Can I get an amen? And I know some of you in this room, you've just experienced some pretty serious heartache. Maybe some of you in this room are experiencing suffering. Some of you who are watching are going through things that you might not be able to share with others. And you may feel isolated and alone. I just want you to know right now, you are not alone. That there's a living God that has things for us to strengthen us. But we have a part in that. Can I get an amen? In order to start really trying to figure out what we need to do to become spiritually solid, solid we first must ask ourselves this question. What do we treasure the most? Think about that today. What do you treasure the most? I've heard it said, if your house was ever on fire, what would be the first thing you'd go to get? And if you're married, it should, you should say your spouse. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. You don't need to cause any problems at the house, but uh, everybody knows that. Rule number one. I have another way of looking at it. It's whatever you think about the most is what you treasure. Now really focus on that. What you think about the most is what you treasure. It's real easy when you're sitting in a church service and that question is asked, what do you treasure most? We love giving those spiritual answers. Uh, I treasure hope and joy and peace. You know, listen, I've been so foolish enough that a lot of times when football season comes around, man, my treasure can become the New England Patriots. It can. 
It can become, and, and depending on how we play determines my joy, right? If we, if we lose, which is very rare, right? But I mean, you cowboy fans know what I'm talking about because y'all are always... Man, what happened to Pastor Travis? He got ran off the stage and they beat him up outside in Jesus' name. <laughs> But think about that, man. Have you ever been so swayed back and forth by circumstances over things that really just don't matter? We do this all the time because we have absolutely stored up our treasures on earth. Our happiness, our joy comes from our circumstances or our emotion. And man, we can be betrayed by both. There's times you may feel good, but you don't know that you're destroying yourself. We all have to be able to begin to believe that we can store treasures in heaven. In a place that God wants us to store our treasures. So in order to understand that, our thinking may need to change a little bit. That's hard to do. But it's required. Where our brain is, where we, how we process things. Some of us were so quick to be uh, moved by emotion that we find ourselves in a lot of trouble. You know, back then, before technology, if you were angry, there's an exercise that you needed to do before you responded out of your anger. And they said, write a letter of what you would like to say to the individual that offended you and then read it and then eventually tear it apart. And that helps you stay grounded. Well, now what do we do? We have Facebook and, and social media. And when we not only write that thing out, boy, we send it and we share it. And everybody needs to know how mad we are. And then the next post is, you know what? I shouldn't have said that. I apologize. Matthew chapter 6 begins to show us this two-part process on how we can become spiritually solid. Starting in verse 19, it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. The eye is a lamp of the body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, your entire body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Let's just stop right there. Understand that treasures of the earth are unstable. Treasures in heaven are unshakable. Where do you want to put your hope? In things that are changeable, movable, can be destroyed, or things that can't be burdened or shaken by what the world can do? I'll give you an example. Have you ever set a goal in your life and once you reached that goal, you found yourself more depressed? Because you had hoped that that goal would fulfill you. You had hoped that that would have made everything great, only to find out it didn't. And it's disheartening. Well, it's because when you and I put our joy, our faith and our hope in things that can change, we will always be on a roller coaster. Always. And those of you who are type A control freaks, it'll drive you even more crazy because you can't control it. Have you ever tried, the harder I try to fix a problem, the more I mess it up. Man, that, I do that all the time. It's the keep digging the ditch that you're in. I got to dig myself out of here. You're just making a bigger hole. <laughs> Done that. You have too, I'm sure. Verse 21 says this, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is very important. Heart 
is a lot deeper than brain. You can control your brain or allow your brain to control you. The only way you can control your brain is if you allow your heart to speak to you before your brain does. Give an example. If somebody offends you, your brain will say, lash back. Your heart will say, why did they offend you? You'll start seeing people from a different perspective. Nobody likes to be offended. Can I get an amen? And just think today, I might offend you. But understand this. We choose how to handle the offense of others. I don't get an amen on that one. I mean, right now I'm getting glares. I I told you not to be stepping on my feet today, Pastor. We are the ones that choose that. If you lash out and you go crazy and you fight back and, and destroy everything, that's on you. That's not on them. Right? Can I get an amen? Come on. This is truth here. This is stuff that's to set us free. And I don't know if you know this about refuge. We're all about the hard way. Take some of us a couple of trips to figure out, I shouldn't do that. There's a discipline of seeing things for what they are. Not everything we desire is beneficial. This usually happens in relationships. Everybody put your toes back. Listen to this. If your joy, your peace, and your hope is contingent upon your relationship where people change. Don't ever expect to find yourself solidified. In fact, we do a disservice when we look at our person that we're in a relationship and we put unreal expectations on them to make us happy all the time. When you get married, you're sitting there cross, holding hands, looking into your spouse's eyes going, She's going to make me happy for the rest of my life. And she's looking into his eyes going, he will please me and do whatever I ask him to do. This is a beautiful day. Oh, it takes a week before you find out. It ain't like that. It ain't like that at all. Right? That whole happily ever after thing. <laughs> Disney's got a trademark on that. Because we want to believe it, but it ain't real. Notice that the prince and the princess, and they lived happily ever after. There's a reason why Disney has to end the story right there. Because they haven't talked about laundry or taking the trash out or all these different honey-do lists and I want to play my video games. I mean, it's the beginning of the journey, not the end result of one. Can I get an amen? And if I put all the pressure... On my relationships to make me happy, they're going to let me down. I have to find it in something that is more solid. Something that can't be determined by the emotions or circumstances of this earth. In order to do that, the first thing I must do is begin to focus and see things for what they are. There's a beauty in this. If all of a sudden you're at work and you do a great job, right? And you've done well. And your supervisor takes credit for it. Oh. That's not fair. And what do you do? You cry out to God and go, Lord, smite them for me. <laughs> and if you're not going to smite them, at least a flat tire or something. That's wrong. And you know what God says? No, see things for what they are. Would you rather be a person that works hard and accomplishes things and takes pride in your work? Or would you rather be somebody who takes credit for things they don't do? See things for what they are. I didn't get credit for this, but I know I'm working. I know I'm getting better. I promise you, the person that takes credit for things they don't do, they will be exposed. It will happen. But you know what happens to the person who just stays after it and keeps working? They can't help but get promoted. Do your work as though you're doing it unto the Lord. Understand this. God is not bound by what we do here. Now, he cares for our concerns. Can I get an amen? Man, if there's a promotion coming, Lord, I'd like that promotion, but it's not going to take the place of you. 
Which one's stronger? To trust God whether you get the promotion or not get the promotion? Or to tell God I better get that promotion or I'm not going to believe? Some of us in this room, you're in the darkest place you've ever been before in your life and God was still there. He will not leave you nor forsake you. That's a treasure in heaven. You're not going to find that on earth because I can promise you this on earth. You're going to feel like there's times God has left you and forsaken you. Because your emotions will betray you. But your spirit won't. Your spirit will remind you these are his words and he does not lie. That's treasures in heaven. Now notice this. You can't serve God and money is what that scripture says. This is a good opportunity for us to bring the plates back out. Say, quit worshiping that money and put it in our plate. Right? No, that's not what it's about. It's deeper than that. In fact, let me change it to this. You cannot serve both your will and God's will. We try. Ooh, we try. In fact, that's what we want to do. We want to say, Lord, bring me your will and let's mesh it together with my will and it'll be awesome. And God says, sorry, it's either your will or it's mine. And we actually go to God as if we're at the negotiation table. Okay, okay. I'll give you this, but I want this. And God says, I don't bargain. I gave all of my son, not part. You can either fully receive it. Or you can choose to deny it. But you can't have it both ways. It's the same as if we took an old garment and sewed it to a brand new strong garment. Eventually it's going to split and that's why we get on spiritual roller coasters. We sit there and we go, Lord, I want you and God moves. But then we get back to ourselves and we go back to a place of emotion and circumstance. And we keep going backward and forward. The second part is a beautiful part, easy to say, hard to do. Verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, once you put your treasures in heaven, do not worry about your life. Everybody got it? We good? Okay, thanks for coming. Don't be afraid. Don't worry. Have a good day. Wouldn't it be just awesome to make that decision, wake up in the morning? I'm not going to worry today. No, doesn't work like that. Do not worry what you will eat or drink or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, this is important, you of little faith? So do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them. He knows what you need. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Can I get an amen on that? Do not worry. Anybody in here a good worrier? Not a warrior. Worrier. Man, I'm awesome at it. I can worry about worrying too much. I'm that good. We worry. We worry over the goofiest stuff, don't we? I mean, and, and I know I make this, uh, we say this all the time. It's the paper and plastic issue. You go to the grocery store and they like, would you like paper or plastic? Um, I don't know. And you start getting, uh, which, which one should I get? And I promise you, they're looking at you going, I don't care. I just want to sack you up and get you out of here, man. 
but we freak out and we worry about things. But notice this, the world operates in fear. That's how the world turns. It continues to operate in fear and worry, create a problem, offer a solution that does not manifest only to show another problem to create another solution. And it's this rotating spiritual yo-yo. When the truth of the matter is, if you have God, if your treasure's in heaven, then just get your groceries home. I can help you. Paper or plastic, you choose. And watch them go, ah, 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 ah. Notice this. Being able not to worry is not come from emotion, but by faith. Because you are human. You will experience fear. You will experience worry. Right now, those online and those here today, you might be experiencing worry because of the circumstances in your life. Let me tell you something. That's real. I'm not trying to escape that. This is not an unrealistic thing to say, just close your eyes, pretend it's not there, it's not there. No, some of us are facing some serious issues. But the perspective of how we handle these issues is what's important. Will we allow our emotions and circumstances to determine our joy or are we able to work at discipline to say i know i feel afraid yet i will have faith that god's in control though i don't know the outcome i'm going to trust him either way Ladies and gentlemen, that takes discipline. You have to do that on a daily basis. Believe me, I wish I could just pray, lick my hand, slap you on the forehead, and you'd never worry again. Except for the saliva I put on your forehead. Doesn't work like that because it's a walk with God. Wouldn't that be so much easier if we just said one prayer and then God came down and none of us worried again? You see, God is not a God of instant gratification. We are a people that demand instant gratification. We want it, we want it now because that's who we are. And no wonder we're on a spiritual yo-yo. No wonder we don't know when, when we're up and when we're down because we have not taken the time to grow. Let me ask you a question. Let's say you go to the Home Depot and you buy yourself a tree. Why? Because you are a good earth person. (laughs) <laughs> and you get this tree and you go plant it in your front yard and you do it perfectly. You got the, the tree and the trees up and it's great. And you, you say, look, we have a tree. And your kids come out and go, yay, build us a tree house. And you go get two by fours and you start building a tree house on this little tree. What's going on with that tree? It's not going to hold anything. It's going to fall down. You know what we're going to do? We go, That's a worthless tree. No, you're going to go to Home Depot and say, excuse me, I want to return this tree. It didn't hold the tree house. And the tree people are going to go, well, this is a brand new tree. It takes time for it to develop roots. It needs to be watered. It needs to be fed. It needs to be trimmed. It needs to weather some dust storms in Lubbock. But if you grow it and you take care of it and you work on it and you, you love it and all of a sudden it becomes so strong. Not only can it hold a tree house, but it becomes so steadfast. There's nothing that this world can do to it to shake it. You see, when we go to God and say, Lord, make me strong. He goes, let's begin. Just like working out. If you want to be strong, it's going to take time. You're going to have to work on it. And so to go to God and say, Lord, make me spiritually strong. Help me be spiritually steady. He's going to say, great, let's work on that. And you're going to find yourself in situations where you get to practice operating in faith versus fear. Now notice right there, that's where a lot of people stop. That's where a lot of people go, nope. I'd rather just say in the name of Jesus and not have to deal with it. Not us. 
Ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. This is so important. Right now, our world does not need to see swayed back and forth Christians. Our world needs to see people who are so rooted in who they are in God that they don't care if death comes to their door. They will still praise his name. Why not us? We have to be spiritually strong in this. Let's reason this together. Verse 25 through 30 talks about how is anybody going to do better by worrying? Have you ever figured anything out by worrying? Has it ever helped you? Did it ever make you feel good? All I do is drink a lot of Dr. Pepper and eat when I get worried. And that creates a problem. It doesn't. Worrying never helps. But if you operate in this world, if you're trying to find the answers in this world, you're going to worry because this world changes all the time. But to be able to go to God and say, Lord, I don't know what today brings, whether good or bad, I'm trusting in you. Whether I have a flat tire or I get a new car, I'm not going to be affected either way. I'll be happy in both. Notice God says, you a little faith. It requires faith, and I really want to help explain this because I think... Our society as, as Christians has taken faith and made it a manipulating tool to God. If you think you have faith, know this. You are not the owner and operator of your faith. Somebody says, I got great faith. It's easy to have faith when there's money in the account and everybody likes you. It's really hard to have faith when there's no evidence or circumstance, or emotion that supports it. That's when your faith is shown. And believe me, when you're rock bottom on that, the only thing you can do is cry out to God and say, I need you, which scripture says is the author and the finisher of our faith. You see, so many times in my life, I focused on faith. I need to have more faith. I need to have more faith. And I'd go to God and I'd say, how can I get more faith? Which in itself is a statement of lacking faith. Think about that. Follow me here. If I say, Lord, I want more faith. Do you know why I want more faith? So I don't have to have faith. You understand? Instead of saying, Lord, you're my faith. Instead of focusing on faith, I'm going to focus on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of my faith. I'm going to focus on your words. Lord, it's not about me. It's about you. Lord, it's not about my will. It's about your will. Lord, I'm having a horrible day today. Nobody likes me. My coffee's bad. And I had to work late. I'm not happy. But I have joy in you. No matter what. We learn these things. But it requires faith. Faith to me is simply this. Believing without fact or emotion. So I'm going to ask you today, is this a good day for you? Can you say that with conviction? Because I'm telling you, there's times when I have to tell myself, oh, this is a good day. And I'm trying to convince myself it's a good day. But the point is this, if I wake up every day focused on who he is, then it doesn't matter the day I'll get through it because I know he'll walk with me. See, what we hope is that when God walks with us, we'll never have a red light. We'll get the greatest parking places. We'll find the things on sale. We want our life easy. When God says, no, I'm a God that will walk through the fire with you. I will make you strong. I will make you steadfast. Notice this verse 33. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Boy, we love that scripture. But I need to break this scripture down for you. Seek him first, and he will give you everything you need. But he does not have to give you what you want. Give me an amen on that one. That's a hard one. But he knows better. Think about that. Lord, I'm seeking you, so hook me up. 
What a horrible motive to go to God. Now listen to me, man, hear me on this. God wants us to throw all of our cares upon him. Lord, I do want to own a home one day. Lord, I do need a new car. Lord, I would like a better job. Lord, help me to be a better person. These things are great, but they are never to take the place of who God is in your life. Whether you get the things you want or not, at the end of your life should not be in any concern of whether your life was successful or not. Because at the end of this life is where life begins. But I need to say this. You and I can experience the presence of God here and now. To seek him first, knowing that he will take care of everything on the bad days as well as the good days. Whether we're celebrating Christmas or we're having to go to a funeral, God is still God. Notice this, once you become disciplined in placing your treasures in heaven, focusing on who God is, and then really setting a discipline and not to worry about your life, something happens, you will begin to develop spiritual contentment. Really digest that word, that phrase today, spiritual contentment. Learning to be content in all circumstances and situations. When you are able to walk in spiritual contentment, you're unshakable. You will not be beaten. You will not be broken. You may get knocked down, but you will get back up because you will learn to be content in all things. One of the greatest examples that we have from this congregation, not just one example, but many, is we have, have, we have had some parishioners who got to experience a staycation at our state's nice facilities. That's a nice way of saying we got some folks been locked up. And the weirdest thing about it is, sometimes we get to talk to our folks before they get locked up. There's nothing better than going to somebody saying, how are you doing today? Hey, pray for me Monday. Why? Going to jail. <laughs> oh, Okay. They're not trying to escape their punishment. They're not trying to escape their consequence. They know they messed up, but they want to know that God goes with them. And it never fails when they get back out and they come back. And yes, we do want them to come back. Can I get an amen? amen. They begin to celebrate the day they got arrested. They begin to say, that was the best day of my life because it stopped my destruction. Now, I've never been in jail, but I've visited. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm freaked out if I ever get locked up. Because I know, and I've heard stories just about the isolation and everything else. So I can imagine that God sits there in a room of four walls and is able to give freedom. That's something that comes from heaven. Because I promise you. Those individuals are locked up. There's no circumstance that should make them go. Everything's good. Yet they feel the presence of God and they're free in the midst of the cell. The worst part is when they get out. They are re-given the freedom to mess up. And bind themselves again. We all have that. If you put your treasures in earth, if you put your circumstances, what you want to do in earth, you and I will continue to be on a spiritual roller coaster facing emotional decisions. But until we're able to put our treasures in heaven and choose not to worry on the day, that's when we become spiritually content and we are solid. Let me show you what that looks like. You wake up tomorrow, Monday morning. Get your coffee. Sipping your coffee, you turn on the news. And the news says, meteor colliding with earth in 24 hours, total devastation. And you're watching people lose their mind. And your friends call you, are you okay? Can you believe it? It's gonna end, everything's going crazy. What are we gonna do? And you're like, I'm gonna sip my coffee. Why aren't you freaking out? Why aren't you panicking? 
because I'm drinking coffee. I'm not going to spill my coffee. You're just ignoring it. No, because I know that I know whether this meteor destroys us or we survive, I know who I am and I know who I follow and I believe him at his word. So I'm just going to sip my coffee. Next thing you know, the meteor doesn't hit. But then you turn on the news the next day. What do you do? You get up, get your coffee, turn on the news, and there's new development. The government has solved all the world's problems. And everybody's celebrating. Yay! Everything's awesome. It's going to be perfect. And you're going. Your friends call you. Can you believe it? Everything's awesome. There's no more issues ever. And you're like, it's good coffee. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Well, why aren't you celebrating? Because tomorrow's coming. And things on this earth change daily but because my treasures are in heaven and i choose not to worry about today i'm just gonna enjoy my coffee that's spiritually steadfast that's being spiritually content all the way to our deathbed do you have any last words could i get some coffee Aren't you worried about dying? Nope. That's where I begin. Well, how do you know that? You don't have any truth. Because he said it. And everything he has said to me has come true. He has never left me. He has never forsaken me. He has always given me his love. He has always been there for me. And he has always given me grace when I needed forgiveness. That strength. And right now, our world, our city, our work, our homes needs to see Christians who do not live in fear, but store their treasures in heaven and choose every day not to worry, but trust in God, whether good day or bad day, whether life or death. Ladies and gentlemen, may that be the strength of refuge. Can I get an amen? Let's stand together. Thank you guys so much for watching on Facebook Live. We'll see you same time next week, 1130 on Sundays. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you and I thank you so much that you are a God that is not shaken by this world. For Father, you do not know what it is to fear because you're a spirit of truth, power, and sound mind. Lord, I pray right now that you would show each and every one of us how to store up our treasures where you are. And Father, that you walk with us every day so that we will not worry about the day. But in everything, Father, may we be the example of love in a world that is struggling, in a city that is struggling, in our homes that may be struggling. Father, help us to be spiritually content in all things because our joy, our strength, our purpose, our hope, our power is in you. Do all you have in mind with us, Father, for we are with you heart and soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.